Hello everyone and welcome to Stress Lesson 3, which is all about life changes as a source of stress. Okay, so just very briefly then, life changes are big events that take place in our lives. The really, really important things that don't happen very often. They only happen from time to time. Things like getting married, getting divorced, um, having a close relative or a friend die, changes in your financial state for better or for worse, uh, new family members arriving, so pregnancy, that kind of thing. They're all life changes and they're not everyday events. However, they are very often major stressors in our lives. Now, the reason that they are major stresses is because they take a significant amount of psychological adjustment to adapt to a change in circumstance. And the bigger the change, the greater the psychological adju adjustment that we need to make, and therefore the greater the associated stress. Now, the effects of life changes are also cumulative. Now, what that means is, is that they add together to create more stress uh, because jointly they require even more change to adapt. And that applies to positive or pleasant life changes, and it also applies to negative life changes as well. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether a life change comes along as positive, um, pregnancy, for example, or um, being able to move house, um, or whether it's because you've got divorced or you've lost a job. They're all the same in terms of a life change, and they all require very significant psychological adjustment and adaptation. Okay, so because life changes are thought to be linked to the onset of illness, um, a lot of research has actually attempted to establish which physical and which psychological illnesses are especially likely to uh, be preceded by stressful life changes. So to do this, researchers have developed ways of measuring life change so that they can conduct research, you know, and use a standardized measuring tool. So because of that, Holmes and Ray in 1967 uh, created what's known as the Social Readjustment Rating Scale. Okay, And essentially what the SRRS is, uh, is a list of life events that you can see here on the right hand side of the screen. And with every life event comes a, a score, essentially, of how stressful it is. And that score is um, an LCU, which is a life change unit. The more stressful the event, the more life change units it gets allocated. Now, as you can see on the list there, they're not all negative. Now, they start off fairly negative, don't get me wrong, but for example, quite close to the top there, you've got marriage, let's say. So marriage is, well, it should be a positive thing, um, so it isn't just about negative stuff. So this is what I was saying earlier. It doesn't really matter whether it's positive or negative. It's all about the psychological adjustment that's needed um, to actually get through the life change. Now, early research using the SRS was retrospective. So essentially what that means is that participants ticked off all of the life changes that they could recall over the previous 12 months. And then the LCU score um, for these changes were added up to produce a total score, which could then be correlated with a measure of illnesses that the participants had had uh, experienced over the same period. Now, what Ray suggested was that participants who scored under 150 life change units wouldn't experience any particular negative effects of those life events. However, of those participants who scored between 150 and 300 life change units, 50% of them were more likely to go on and develop illnesses in the following year. And of those people who had higher than 300 life change units, 80% of them were more likely to go on and experience illnesses in the coming year as well. So there was a, uh, a definite correlation there between the two things. Okay, so the SRRS is still the most commonly used scale to measure life changes um, and it is used for a lot of research. One of those pieces of research we are now going to go on and have a little look at. Um, it's a key study conducted by Ray et al. in 1970. 
1970, Ray et al. studied U.S. Navy personnel assigned to three separate Navy cruisers in order to investigate the relationship between stress and illness. Now, for this particular study, Ray et al. used a variation of the SRRS known as the SRE, which is the Schedule of Recent Events. It works in the same way, but it was altered a little bit just to kind of make it more applicable to military personnel. Now, the way that the study then worked was that people had to complete the schedule of recent events, and they were given a, uh, a, com- a total life change unit score. And then during a six-month tour of duty, records were kept of individual visits to sick bay and the severity of their illness and the duration of their stay in sick bay was also recorded, and they were then given an illness score. Okay, so each member um, of the study then had a life change unit score, and they also had an illness score, which Ray et al. could then use to create a correlation. Okay, and the researchers found a significant positive correlation of 0.118 for the LCU scores and the scores for illnesses aboard the ship. So in other words, those who experienced the most stressful life changes before leaving on active service also had the most illnesses or the most severe illnesses whilst they were on duty. Okay, so the conclusion was that life changes were a reasonably robust predictor of later illness. Okay, now that is the key study for this particular topic. It's the only study that I'm going to give you because, if I'm honest, it's the only study that you really need to know. And I stress the word need to know. Okay, you might be given other studies. There might be another study in the book that you are using, but this is the key study. Okay, it's enough for an essay to use this study. It's enough if you get asked in, a, in an exam to outline a study into the effect of life, ch- life changes on stress. This is the study to use. Okay, if you want to use another study, if you want to learn a second study um, alongside this one, then that's fine. But this is the most important one, and it is enough to know this one to complete an essay or an exam question. Okay. And on that note, we will head over to the evaluations. As usual, I've got three evaluation points for you. I'll go through them first, and then I will put up on the screen a peeled paragraph so that you can see what they would look like. Okay, we'll start off with some research support. Now, the good thing about this particular type of research and this topic of research is that there are decades of studies that support the view that life changes are linked to stress. So, for example, Leedson et al. in 2011 used data from the Health and Social Support Study in Finland to follow up over 160,000 adults. Now, these adults did not have asthma at the beginning of the study. However, they found that high levels of life change stress were a, re- were a reliable predictor of asthma onset by the end of the study. That particular link was also not explained by other known risk factors such as owning a pet or smoking or something like that. Okay, so more and more and more studies that are being conducted into this particular topic are finding a positive and robust correlation between life stresses and illnesses. Another good thing about this type of research is that it's prospective. Now, that means is that it attempts to predict illnesses in the future based on past life changes. And that's very, very good for real life applications. And it's also good because it makes it very methodologically powerful. Okay, so that's a lot of reasons why such research that keeps finding the same thing over and over and over again is very, very important. It also obviously is given a lot of credibility if the same findings are found over and over and over again. Okay, moving on, we have some individual differences. So, Burnham White, 1980, tried to predict who would experience a heart attack on the basis of their life change score. But what they found was that this only worked when they took into account the subjective interpretations of the participants regarding a particular event. 
The problem is that people don't all experience an event in the same way because there's a lot of stuff that goes around an event which also impacts how we feel. So, for example, somebody who, let's say, moves house. Now, moving house is a horrible and stressful event in any case. However, somebody who's moving house for a happy, positive reason, let's say they are now financially better off than they were five years ago or 10 years ago, might experience a little bit less stress than somebody who is moving house because they are now financially worse off because maybe they've lost their job or something like that, or they've had to take a pay cut. There's going to be more stress involved in that type of a house move than in a house move that has happy circumstances surrounding it. Equally, somebody who gets pregnant, for example. Pregnancy, again, is a very stressful thing for most people. However, somebody who is unexpectedly pregnant might be a little bit more stressed out about it than somebody who was expecting to be pregnant. So again, individual differences play a very, very important part because not everybody is going to experience the same stresses in the same way because there's a lot of stuff that goes around a stressor and around an event which can also affect the way that we feel. Okay, so the classic life change approach fails to consider the impact of individual differences in how life changes are perceived. And because of that, the validity of life changes as an explanation of stress is reduced. Okay, and then the final one is a lovely correlation versus causation point. Okay, most life changes research is correlational. And as ever with this type of research, it is very, very difficult to know what is the exact nature of the relationship between life changes and illness. And because we're not justified in drawing conclusions about cause and effect based on correlational analysis, we also can't claim that the stress of life changes causes illness. It's very possible that some other causal factor, for example, having less money, having a certain personality type, whatever, could explain the relationship. Okay, so the effects could also be indirect rather than direct. Okay, so it's a very, very tricky relationship there because actually we cannot imply cause and effect. Okay, right, those are the evaluation points that I'm going to give you. Here are the peeled paragraphs. So right there, you've got your research support. You've got your individual differences. And then you've got your correlation versus causation. Okay, remember with this one, you've got a lovely opportunity to really go to town and elaborate on what other factors could be involved. Don't do too much because you don't want to start waffling. But if you have a look in my third paragraph down, you can see that I go into detail about, for example, personality characteristics and how that could affect how people take on life changes. Okay, so it's a nice one for you to be able to elaborate on if you can. Okay, right. that is the end of the video. I hope that's been useful and I hope it's all made sense. Thank you very much for listening.